Welcome back. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me at DirtleMTG on Twitter to keep up to date with the most recent videos and other posts. You can help support this content by hitting like and share, and by checking out the links in the description below. Alright, it's time to dirtle. Hello, and welcome to episode 3 of Why Though, where I talk about and make a case for a card in Commander, either that should be recognized and used more, or in some cases, used less. Today I have a request from the comments for Storvald Frost Giant Jarl. This legendary creature is one of the alternate commanders you could use from the Aura of Courage Forgotten Realms Precon Commander deck, whose face commander is Galia, Kindler of Hope. As always, let's start by reading the card. The Mighty Storvald is a 7-drop commander with a casting cost of 4 green, white, blue. It has the stats to match though, with 7 power and 7 toughness, and ward 3 to protect the creature, which I think is pretty good for a ward number. It's so good in fact, the card actually gives it to all of the other creatures you control, helping you protect your board state from targeted removal. We're still not done though, and that last ability reads, Whenever Storvald enters the battlefield or attacks, choose one or both. Target creature has base power and toughness 7-7 seven, seven until end of turn, and or target creature has a base power and toughness 1-1 one, one until end of turn. Storvald is a big beefy creature that can make something else a giant or a sapperling. That mana cost is pretty high though. Unlike Teriel Reckoner of Souls, who we covered in Why Though Episode 1, Storvald has a few things working in their favor. First is that green is in the color identity, which means they have access to the best ramp in the game, turn 1. This might make the cost trivial, and possibly perhaps even turn 4 this commander in a magical Christmas land grandiose kind of thing. Again though, the high mana cost may work out to be more of a benefit than a detriment, much like Teriel's, but more on that later. Moving down the card, we have the ability Ward, specifically for 3. I've gone back and forth on this versus Hexproof, and I still don't have an opinion on it. Over time, Hexproof received a number of ways to counter it, and probably most well known of which is the Shadow Sphere or the Archetype of Endurance. Ward, however, associates a cost with the interaction like a tax effect. All that is stopping you from interacting with the card is a little bit of extra mana, and I think that's where the arguments for Ward versus Hexproof reside. Regardless of that discussion, and before I get into a whole other video here, Ward 3 isn't that bad. In Commander, we have things like Path to Exile and Pondrify, and even the potentially free spells like Deadly Rollick. This just gives them a little bit more to get through, as opposed to not having the option at all, which makes some cards a bit more fair, especially like Deadly Rollick. This Giant of Frost also gives your other creatures the same ward ability as a static effect, helping protect your entire board creature-wise. That's not too shabby, and it works both with creatures you have out now and creatures you put out later, helping develop your board after a possible wipe or even when you attack and block. Speaking of which though, this creature wants to start swinging when it can. Even has an ETB that lets you put some combat into your favor, making one creature a 7-7 and another creature a 1-1. This really has all kinds of benefits, but let's start with the obvious first, combat. This card can slowly help remove pieces off the board while making threats out of your weaker creatures. Not to mention Storvald Ulray being a 7-7 means there's likely 14 damage going somewhere soon. With access to white and blue, there are also bound to be some excellent flyer creatures that you can put out early in the game and simply pump to comical sizes. You attack, make their problem creatures smaller, maybe sprinkle in some evasion like trample, and profit. You can also use this quite effectively by making your guys smaller and opponent stuff bigger. Instead of attacking, you can blink Storvald a few times, making a bunch of your creatures 1-1, one, one, maybe making some of the opponent's creatures 7-7s, seven, and then cast something like Citywide Bust or Fell the Mighty. Engineer a one-sided board wipe, and you can potentially swing through for a lot of damage on the following turn. You can also use cards like Aligned Hedron Network to clear the board using the same trick as well. I mean, nothing should be taller than a giant, am I right? One last thing I want to touch on again is the mana cost. Like Teriel, this card is usually better coming down later in the game once you have a board state to protect. Alone, Storvald has a good effect without even attacking in Ward 3, and the follow-up after that can be just as good. The color identity of this commander really lends all those color strengths to this creature and the deck around it. Protection, evasion, blinking, beatdown, and more all lead to this being a fine commander, and one that control decks, big ramp decks, and combo decks can use to finish the game, and that's really the strength of Storvald. No, casting the legend isn't that fast, and no, it's not a very flashy card, but it is a dependable, no-nonsense commander that will win you the game while keeping things frosty. 
Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Why Though, where I ask the titular question about whatever magic card strikes my fancy and examine why it is awesome or maybe too awesome. However, I am open to suggestions, so if you have a card you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. I read the comments on my videos, so there's a chance I'll cover a card you suggest. Until next time, stay safe out there and get in some epic games of magic.